what's up guys today we're gonna to do another episode of animated stories so this girl saw her first mail at 17 so anyway let's hear her side of the story Ugh, boys are so complicated i know a lot of people have strange relationships with the opposite gender but i can guarantee you that my tail really takes the cake do you think you have problems talking with boys imagine how confused i got the first time i ever saw one i was head over heels and a complete idiot that's right. I didn't see a boy until I was 17. I didn't even know there were other genders besides females. I'm really not kidding. You're probably one. So who enrolled this girl? Do they just enroll this girl in an all-girl school? Because that kind of sounds like the case. And then when she was 17, she moved to a, a both male and female kind of school. Wondering how that was possible. Well, that's kind of a long story, but I promise it's worth the wait. Before I go into any of that, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. If you, you heard that. Fresh, we'll send don't you forget to subscribe to mine too. Days, I promise. I didn't grow up with the concept of a crush or romance. Instead, I was raised in a very alternative way. When I was just a baby, I somehow ended up in the middle of nowhere in a big house filled with only women and girls. We did everything together. We referred to ourselves as a commune, but in retrospect, it was more like a cult. We all wore the same clothes and had our hair done in the same way. We all looked eerily alike. To outsiders, it was like we were all sisters. In actuality, the headmistress decided what we would look like and gave us little makeovers to be her walking clones. Some girls were lucky enough to have naturally blonde hair, but I was forced to bleach my hair at a very young age. She took us having the same image very seriously. It went well beyond matching dresses and hair colors. This one time when I was around eight, this girl around my age went off into the woods without telling anyone. That kind of thing was explicitly against the rules. She ended up playing around the forest and got her head stuck in a broken maple tree. By the time some of the older men were able to find her, her hair was completely covered on the stuff from the tree. After maybe an hour of trying to wash it out, the headmistress came out with a knife and cut it all sloppily off. It looked so bad, but that wasn't the worst part. So let me get this straight, guys. She was at an all-girl school, but they had this dressed the same way. So to outsiders, she had to look. She had to look like sisters on the outside world. When in reality, she's just looking like her headmistress. Next, she ordered us to line up and one by one, and she started giving everyone the same sloppy haircut. I loved my hair, and when she came to me, I cried as loud as I could. It wasn't my fault. Why was I being punished? There's no I here, the headmistress said as she lopped off my hair, which was already brittle enough from all of the bleaching. She also cut her hair in the end, effectively making us all hideous. That's just what the cult was all about wiping away our individual identity. I know this sounds like a nightmare, but for years it was just my life. There were lots of shady things I discovered from time to time, but I never addressed them because I found it normal, or I did for a while at least. One day, I decided to go on my own little adventure. I was only about eight. I didn't see any harm in it. I wasn't supposed to walk away from the farm, but I didn't feel like spending another grueling eight hours tending the crops. I thought I could sneak away for a little bit, so I waited for the headmistress to leave. Next, I told the other girls I had to go to the bathroom, but I actually quickly ducked behind a corner when they weren't looking. The next thing I did was quickly run away from the house. I had never been farther than the farm at this point. I expected to see more of the forest or something, but instead I just saw a fence. It wasn't a pleasant picket fence, though. It had barbed wire twisted around it everywhere. Next, I heard the headmistress. She sounded like she was on the other side of the fence. I wonder how the headmistress actually afforded all this. Spending with her being sure she probably doesn't get a lot of money. But I couldn't see. I tried to lean up for a better look on the other side, but ended up cutting my hand up pretty bad. I immediately shouted out in pain, and before I could see where she came from, the headmistress was right there. She wasn't worried about me getting hurt, though. She was very angry. She didn't bother to help me bandage it up, and instead dragged me back to the rest of the girls while I was crying. Next, she pulled me up by my arm. Wow, that is the rudest headmistress ever. 
if I was the headmistress and she, and a player, someone got hurt, I would just get that first aid kit, clean it all up, and then I would bandage her up real good. And I would just say, try try to be more careful next time. Arm and started lecturing all of us. First, about how irresponsible we were that someone could get away so easily, and then about the dangers of leaving the protected grounds. If you thought the haircut was weird, you should brace yourself for what came next. After I got my hand bandaged up, we all had to wear wraps on our hands. It was so weird. The other girls complained that it made the farm work difficult, but the headmistress said that we were all in this together. Even though I had a feeling there was something off about our lives, I didn't really have anything to compare it to. The only things I ever read were print -up. Actually, if I was also the headmistress, I would... I wouldn't have made somebody dress up differently. I would just... I would just limit, like, to the shirt. Or something like that. Or at least the same kind of sweatpants. <laughs> otherwise, I could, otherwise, I would say, you guys can have the same hair color, hairstyle. You can wear makeup if you want. You can wear any shirt you want. You don't have to wear heels. I would just make them look, like, somewhat similar to each other. Like, not too much similar. That way, they don't look like... They don't all look like twins. Dogs the headmistress made. I had never watched TV or heard music that we hadn't played ourselves. I honestly thought that the world just sort of ended beyond the walls. The headmistress explained how we lived at the center of the world, and beyond the fences, it was full of monsters and the unknown. I know some of the things I used to believe sound so stupid, but try not to judge me. It's all I ever knew. You're probably wondering how we kept ourselves busy in such a small world. Well, it wasn't easy at all. First off, there was a lot of praying. My entire existence focused around this religion that the headmistress made up on her own. Our beliefs focused on the importance of discipline and hard work. Anytime we weren't out on the farm, we were praying. One time we literally spent four hours straight just knelt down in silence. My knees were so bruised. Praying and working were the only things we were permitted to do. I asked the headmistress what we were praying so hard for because my knees were really starting to hurt. She told me that we were praying for the only two important things in life, the safety of our fellow sisters and creating babies. I know what you're thinking. How do you get babies in a society with only women? You need to promise not- Yeah, you need a, you need a male to create babies. I'm not gonna give you guys the whole story because this, I'm done with Health Wolf. Like, I did an episode of this on Health Wolf, but I'm not gonna do any more Health Wolf episodes. So I'm not gonna lecture you on how to make babies. If there's, if I had an episode on that, I would get, you guys could totally watch those. Not to laugh at what I'm about to tell you, because I never got a proper talk about where babies come from. You'll have to wait a little bit, because to understand where we thought babies come from, you need to understand our ideas of the world. See, we were raised on a belief that we came from the farm itself. I truly believe that the entire world fit in this tiny four acre plot. You might wonder why we never tried to explore beyond the walls. Well, we were raised on horror stories. One day, we didn't have enough vegetables growing on the farm. The headmistress made us cut our portions in half. I was so hungry. I asked her if I could go try to find some food beyond the wall, or maybe even set up a new farm where maybe the ground was more fertile. She warned me that if I went beyond the walls, I would be gobbled up by massive monsters. She told us about big monsters made of men. Okay, I know monsters don't exist. They're just in your mind. Why would you tell a girl that there's going to be monsters behind that? That there's going to be monsters behind the fence? I'm not going to even swear this out. Metal and flashing lights that would swallow us whole just for fun. A part of me wanted to be skeptical of this, but people did disappear. Alright, I'm gonna skip on board. A farm and rotating out of your old job. I had kind of expected to be switched from pumpkins to apples, but I was shocked to hear she had a much bigger job in mind. She enlisted me as a watch guard for the perimeter. I was told it was a very important and dangerous job given to only the most trusted officials. After this, she would make sure to grow me a baby. It was my sole job to walk around the perimeter the whole day and make sure no one was coming in or getting out. She entrusted me with the sole piece of technology I thought we carried on the estate, a walkie-talkie. 
As someone who never really ventured near the fence, I didn't think it would be such an active job. You would actually be surprised by how life-changing this promotion was. One day, when I was making my rounds, I experienced the most traumatic thing in my life. I heard the sound of branches breaking on the other side of the fence. I immediately called the headmistress. She told me to go back to my room and she would take care of it. My curiosity got the better of me, and I decided to blow out my candle, shut off my walkie-talkie, and duck behind a bush to watch. Sure enough, a few minutes later, the headmistress showed up. She was holding some contraptions I had never seen before. I have since learned the names of these two objects. The first was a flashlight. It lit everything up so much better than the lantern. I could see everything. I could now see that the sound of the branches breaking was Missy, one of the team members of the community. At first, I felt some relief that there weren't any dangerous intruders or evil monsters. It didn't take long for those pleasant feelings to leave me. Right after Missy started apologizing for leaving, the headmistress pulled out the second contraption. What I know now was a gun. Missy and... Oh no, that is so child abuse. We're gonna skip board. Uh, no, that's not skip. to a monster. I shouted at the person to hold on. I was going to rescue them. That's when the person came out from the monster. They were not like any girl I'd ever seen. They were super tall with broad shoulders and hair all over their face. They spoke with a super deep voice that made my... Wait a minute. Is that a male? That's a male. Stomach drop. Hey, 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 they said. What's all the commotion about? Are you okay? My mouth went dry and I couldn't get any words to come out at all. Oh. Alright guys, I don't think you need to hear the rest of the story. Let me know if you guys want more animated stories. And be sure to hit that like button in the face and subscribe to my wolf pack. Ow! I love you guys. Thanks for watching. Bye guys. And if you're new to my channel, be sure to hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my latest uploads. And with this for watching, bye guys.